Hmm, Hazel is a rock climber. She's packing bags for an expedition to Everest. Can you spot any extra items in her suitcase? It's unlikely that you would need these fancy high-heeled shoes in the mountains. Also, this fragile vase is useless on a hike. Hazel orders a taxi to go to the airport. She's using this app. There are four free cars in her neighborhood, but only one of them can reach Hazel's home. Can you tell which one? It's the third car. Hazel arrives at the airport. She takes a closer look at her ticket and faints. Can you guess why? The name of the airport on the ticket doesn't match the airport that she's in. Hazel needs to go to the correct airport as quickly as possible. These two drivers are eager to give her a ride. Can you tell who will reach the destination faster? Although the second car looks more expensive and chic, it has a flat tire. Therefore, Hazel should choose the first driver. Finally, Hazel boards her flight. She falls asleep right away. She wakes up in a while and realizes that someone has stolen her phone. Hazel questions three suspects. Bill says, I've been watching a movie within the last hour. I didn't look around. Sorry. Kyle says, I was sleeping too until you woke me up. And Sheila says, I'm afraid of flying, so I listen to soothing music with my eyes closed. Can you guess who stole Hazel's phone? Nobody. She just dropped it on the floor over here. See? It's dinner time. Kyle offers Hazel his dessert if she succeeds in guessing the date of his birth. Here's a hint. The day before yesterday, Kyle was 22. And next year, Kyle will be 25. Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? Today is the 1st of January, and Kyle's birthday was on the 31st of December. Therefore, Kyle was 22 on December 30th. Then he turned 23 on December 31st. This year, he will turn 24, and the next year, 25. Finally, Hazel lands in Nepal. She enters the baggage claim area and sees three odd things right away. Can you see them too? There's a dog in this bag. Animals don't come with regular luggage. This baggage cart lacks all wheels and floats in the air. And these boats are parked outside the window along with the planes. Hazel arrives at the meeting point for climbers at the local restaurant. But there's no one there. The cleaning lady says, I was busy cleaning the toilet and just got back. I didn't see anyone. The guard says, oh yeah, the meeting has been delayed for tomorrow, that's for sure. And the waiter says, I've been here all the time, and I haven't noticed any crowds of tourists. Who's lying? The guard. See this sign? The meeting takes place on the roof. That's why they didn't see the tourists. On the way to the roof, Hazel sees a woman who's cleaning a window on the 10th floor. Suddenly, she slips and falls. She doesn't have any safety equipment and nothing to soften her fall. But yet, she's not hurt. How can this be? The woman was cleaning the window inside the building. <laughs> Finally, Hazel meets her group of climbers. But one of these people is an imposter. Can you guess who?
This guy has tentacles instead of a hand. He's definitely not from this planet. Hazel goes on an expedition with the group. She stops to take some pictures and gets lost. In a while, Hazel finds three roads leading to the next mountain village. But every path hides some adventure. There's a hungry snow leopard walking on the first path. There's a herd of Himalayan yaks on the second path. And road 3 leads through an avalanche risk area. Any movement can make the snow slide down. Which way is more or less safe? Hazel should choose the second path. Although these yaks look pretty scary, in fact, they're friendly plant eaters. Hazel checks into the local hostel. She leaves her bags in the room and goes to see the sights of the village. After a while, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her passport. Hazel calls the sheriff, and he interrogates four suspects. The hotel manager says, I was dealing with a tourist group that has just arrived. I didn't notice any robbers. The hostel owner says, I was dealing with the bathroom clog all day. The gardener says, I didn't enter the hostel. I was watering the roses in the garden. And the cleaner says, I was too busy feeding fish in the lobby. I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cleaner. Can you see any aquariums in the lobby? Hazel visits the local restaurant. The cook offers her three meals to choose from. Can you help her pick the safest option? There's a worm in these instant noodles. And there are too many flies around this rice. It's probably not very fresh. So, Hazel should choose this sandwich. In the village, Hazel meets the local guide, Luke. He offers to show Hazel the shortest way to the top. But first, Hazel has to solve his riddle. Luke and his wife have seven children. Half of them are sons. How is this possible? Can you help Hazel solve this mystery? They are all sons. Luke and Hazel begin the trip. On the way, he offers Hazel to visit the local magic caves. Hazel agrees, but eventually she gets lost inside one of the caves. She wanders around for a while and finds these three tunnels. There's a portal to the sun in the first tunnel. There's a box with an ancient magic gemstone inside the second tunnel. This gemstone curses anyone who sees it. And finally, the third tunnel hides a bunch of poisonous scorpions. Which way should Hazel choose to survive? The second one. The gemstone is locked in the box, so Hazel should just walk by it. Hazel needs to cross this toxic swamp to continue her trip. The only way to do so is to jump from one block to another. Can you help her choose the last stone wisely? Each block has a particular number. 1, 5, 9, 13, 17, and 21. This sequence is formed by adding the number 4. Therefore, the remaining block should be 25, not 27. Hazel continues her journey and finds this weird sign engraved on a rock. Can you help her crack the meaning of this code? The arrow is pointing to the right. The message is mirrored. If the P.O.T. is on the right, it means that the T.O.P. or top is on the left. Now Hazel knows the right direction. It's getting really cloudy. It'll rain soon. Hazel decides to hide in one of these three caves and have some lunch. Can you help her pick the safest place to stay? T. 
take a look at the tracks. The first cave is probably home to a family of bears. Mother bears can get furious when it comes to their cub projection. As for the second cave, it's obvious that a human being has entered it and come back out, which is encouraging. And now, let's take a look at the third cave. A human entered it but never came out. Therefore, Hazel should choose the second cave. Finally, Hazel reaches the top of the mountain. Suddenly, a kind wizard pops out of nowhere and greets her. He suggests Hazel relocate to a hidden magic world. He says, I'll show you the gates if you solve my riddle. So listen carefully, I'm very fragile, and even just saying my name could break me. What am I? Any ideas what it might be? The correct answer is silence. The wizard chose Hazel the gates. There are three doors, but only one of them leads to the magic world. Can you help Hazel figure this out? Only the second path leads to the final destination. Bye bye That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Morgana is a young witch. She enters her new school. This academy is for mystical beings only. Classmates welcome Morgana with a cake, but one of the students is an imposter. Can you guess who? This guy is the only one who looks like a human, and since this school doesn't accept humans, he doesn't belong here. Morgana is checking in at the student dormitory. She can choose one of three roommates. The first option is Wanda. She's a werewolf. The second choice is Elle. She's a vampire. And this is Zelda. She's also a witch. Can you help Morgana make the right choice? Wanda's room is too cluttered and all the textiles are torn. It will be uncomfortable to live with her. And Zelda has a book called How to Curse Your Roommate on her shelf. That's why Morgana should choose L. Morgana enters the library and explores the shelves with books and golden cups. She heard rumors about a secret passage to a hidden part of the library. Can you help Morgana find it? All the stuff on this wall is equally covered with dust and spiderwebs. But take a closer look at this golden cup. According to the date engraving, it's the oldest cup on the shelf, but it still looks shinier than the others. Suspicious. So Morgana should try to move it. A secret door opens, and Morgana enters a dark hallway. She walks it through and finds three sculptures, but only one of them isn't fake. Can you spot which one? The second statue is too transparent. It's a ghost. And the third statue is moving. It's a guy pretending to be a statue. So the correct answer is the first statue. Morgana asks the statue guy, What is this place? But he refuses to answer until she solves his riddle. I speak without a mouth, and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with the wind. What am I? Morgana failed to solve this mystery. What about you? The correct answer is an echo. The statue guy puts a spell on Morgana, and she falls asleep. After a while, she wakes up in a cage. He says, I'll give you one more chance to escape. Let's play a game. There are three levers. You can only choose one. If you push the first lever, the cage will fill with water in seconds. The second lever will bring two hungry tigers to your cage. 
And if you push the third lever, the cage will get filled with mutant mosquitoes. It's impossible to survive after their bite. Which lever should Morgana choose? She should choose the first lever. Water will simply spill through the bars of the cage. Morgana is attending a zombie biology class. Her teacher, Lady Jessica, shows the class three zombies and says, By the way, which one of these is my ex-boyfriend? Can you guess who? Take a look at Lady Jessica's tattoo. Now we know that her boyfriend has the name that starts with K. The second zombie has a name tag on his leg, according to which his name is Kai. Therefore, he's the ex-boyfriend. Morgana goes to the academy canteen and meets three guys, Magnus, Merlin, and Drake. Everyone's talking about the upcoming school prom. The next day, she receives messages from all three guys. Magnus says, Hey beauty, you're invited. My elf will deliver you an evening gown that matches my suit perfectly. Meet me in the main hall at 8 p.m. Merlin says, Hey, would you like to go to the prom with me? I heard you're an awful dancer just like me. We can meet up early and rehearse so we don't embarrass ourselves in public. And Drake says, Morgana, I think you're my soulmate. Let's skip the prom and have dinner at my lake house. I have a huge collection of movies. Who should Morgana choose? Magnus didn't even ask if Morgana wanted to go with him. He's too selfish. And she barely knows Drake, so it might be dangerous to go to his place. So, Morgana should choose Merlin. Morgana goes to the local store to find the perfect dress, but all the dresses are sold out. She has to choose from these four. Can you see any difference between them? The third dress has a slightly different lace decor. In the evening, Morgana is walking to the dormitory through the garden. She finds her roommate, Elle, lying unconscious in rose bushes. Teachers conclude that someone had put a sleeping curse on her. The only way to help her is to find the wizard and make him reverse the spell. Morgana questions three witnesses. The cook says, I was cleaning the kitchen and I was about to leave after that. The librarian says, Yeah, I was reading a book. It was so interesting. I spent all day indoors and I didn't pay any attention to the outer world. And the gardener says, I was watering lilies in the opposite corner of the garden. I didn't see anything. Who cursed L? It was the librarian. She got her shoes dirty in the mud while putting the spell on L in the garden. Finally, Morgana goes to the prom with Merlin. They take part in a dancing contest but fail to make it to the final. These couples are the top three finalists. Suddenly, the winning couple turns into frogs. The local doctor checks the frogs and finds out that someone had poisoned them with a magic potion. But the dancers ate the same food and drank the same drinks as everyone else at the party. Can you guess what happened here? They danced with a rose in their teeth, remember? It was drenched in the potion. Merlin offers Morgana to have a romantic tour around his great-grandfather's castle. He says, This place is abandoned. No one has entered it for 100 years. Wow, let's explore it. Morgana finds four odd details in the living room. Can you see them too? There's a laptop on the table covered with dust. There were no such laptops 100 years ago. Also, the flowers in this vase are fresh. There's a color photo in a frame on the wall. 
And this old beautiful clock has 13 divisions, not 12. Merlin and Morgana go to the basement. According to rumors, a very powerful magic book is hidden here. They find a large stone box, but unfortunately, it's locked. Do you have any clue how to open it? This odd boss relief with magical runes is a combination lock. The flower has six petals, which means we need to match it with a six-pointed star. The clover has four petals, just like this square has four sides. And finally, the star has five rays, just like a human hand has five fingers. And voila! Merlin opens the book. Suddenly, he yells, it's a fake! Someone sneaked the original ahead of us. How did he know? There's a modern barcode on the cover of this book. Morgana and Merlin find a note in the fake book. Can you help them crack this hint? The paper is purple, and the rebus means corridor, so they should search a purple corridor. Morgana and Merlin wander around and find the purple corridor. There are three doors leading to the original magic book, but each way hides some danger. There are multiple hungry piranhas behind the first door, there's a family of vampires behind the second door, and there's an evil witcher behind the third door. Which way should they choose? Morgana and Merlin walk through the first door. Piranhas can't survive without water, so they're not dangerous. Finally, the guys find the book, but the ghost of its author yells, This book is too precious. I can't give it away to the wrong person. So you should first solve my riddle. I build castles. I tear down mountains. I make some men blind. I help others to see. What am I? The correct answer is sand. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. It's the holiday season, but some evil force is doing its best to spoil the mood. No one knows what this force is or why it's ruining the holidays. That's when Detective Robinson comes into play. Help him crack these riddles to save the day. The first task brings the detective to the North Pole. Someone has been stealing Santa's cookies, which he keeps in the reindeer stables. Santa suspects that the criminal is one of his elves who works there, but he's also worried because all of them are allergic to chocolate, and the disappearing cookies are chocolate chip ones. Detective Robinson gathers all the elves in one room. One of them keeps sticking out his tongue and then blushing and apologizing. The second elf has traces of something brown on his hands. And the third elf keeps smiling and giggling. Look at them attentively and try to figure out which one is the thief. The guy with the brownish spots on his fingers works in the stables, so no wonder his hands are dirty. Elves are cheerful creatures, which means that a smiling and giggling elf is not actually an unusual occurrence. But the first elf, his tongue is likely swollen as a result of an allergic reaction. Here's our cookie thief. Three teenagers sneak into Santa's home. When he comes home after work, he sees three guilty-looking kids and his 20-foot uh -oh. tall plastic Christmas tree lying on the floor. Santa knows that one of the kids must have climbed the tree, which made it fall over. He calls our detective. Chris immediately arrives. After looking at the kids attentively, he tells Santa who is guilty. Can you figure it out too?
This guy with green hair looks as if he has some Christmas tree needles in his hair. But don't forget that the tree is plastic and can't lose any needles. The guy on the left has a star on his sweater that looks like the one at the top of the tree. But look, it's embroidered. Now, look at this girl with a pretty sparkly scarf. It looks suspiciously similar to tinsel decorating the Christmas tree. That's because it is tinsel. Busted! While the detective and Santa are away, solving the mystery of the overturned Christmas tree, someone steals all the presents from Santa's warehouse. Uh oh. After investigating the case, Detective Robinson has three suspects. All of them are elves. Each of the elves claims he was at home when the crime happened. The road is impossible to navigate on foot since it's been snowing for the last several hours. So, whoever did this had to use a sleigh. Can you help Chris figure out who the criminal is? This elf looks pretty angry, but it might be because his sleigh is broken. It means he couldn't have left his home. The sleigh of the elf on the right is covered with a thick layer of snow. It's unlikely that he used it recently, but look at the sleigh of the elf in the middle. There's snow under it. It means that the sleigh was parked near the house after the snow had already started falling. The elf wasn't at home, so why is he lying? One of Santa's elves put the key to the warehouse where Santa keeps presents into an empty bottle and plugged it with a cork. Detective Robinson needs to remove the key without breaking the bottle or pulling out the cork. How can he do it? Chris pushed the cork inside the bottle and shook the key out. Detective Robinson's next task is unusual to say the least. He needs to go to a haunted gingerbread mansion and face one of three horrifying monsters. They've taken up residence in the tasty but currently unapproachable house. Chris's potential opponents are 1. A 7-foot tall reanimated Christmas turkey. It's threatening the detective with knives and looks extremely unfriendly. 2. A scorching hot eggnog monster that looks like a moving pile of slime. 3. Or a menacing looking 8 foot tall candy cane creature with long, sharp limbs? Uh -oh. Help the detective make the right choice! The turkey can be very dangerous with those knives. The candy cane monster's limbs are too sharp to come close to it. As for eggnog, besides being very hot, it doesn't pose any serious danger. The detective just needs to push the monster towards the gingerbread wall and it will absorb the creature very fast. Santa has an unusual problem. One of his elves has just had his birthday, but Santa can't remember how old he's turned. The elf doesn't want to make the task easier. He says, The day before yesterday, I was 34. The next year, I'll be 37. It sounds strange, but the elf hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Santa definitely needs Detective Robinson's help. The elf's birthday is on December 31st, and he's talking about it with Santa on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day. This year, he's going to turn 36, and he will be 37 the following year. No day without an accident. One young elf decided to play a prank on Santa and hid the presents behind one of these two doors. Detective Robinson knows that one of the doors hides a very unfriendly dragon. And behind the other, there are presents. He needs to pick the right door, otherwise the holiday is spoiled. There are two signs on the doors. One of them is a lie, and the other is true. On the first door, it's written, The presents are here. The dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, The presents and the dragon aren't in the same room. Can you help the detective figure out where the presents are?
The presents are in the second room. The second statement is true, which means that the first one is false. After a long working day, Santa comes home and finds out that someone has broken all the glass decorations on his Christmas tree. He's shocked and upset. He calls Detective Robinson and tells him he has two suspects. One of them is one of his reindeer. Santa saw him near his house two hours ago. The other suspect is an elf Santa scolded. Look at the scene and help the detective determine the criminal. Look at the footprints the criminal left on the floor. They're too big and don't belong either to the deer or the elf. They actually look like they belong to Santa himself. But why would he need to frame his workers? This case makes Detective Robinson very suspicious. He starts observing Santa. Soon, Santa invites him for dinner and offers him three dishes to choose from. Since Chris is already wary of Santa, he examines the dishes very attentively. Look at them and say which dish is safe to eat. These chocolate chip cookies look fine until you notice that these chocolate chips are actually bugs. The steam rising over this bowl of soup is suspiciously green. This dish is likely poisoned. The only safe option is apples. Look at this tiny worm. If it can munch through the apple, it's most likely okay to eat. So, does it mean Santa wanted to get rid of Chris after the detective started to suspect something? This Santa can't be the real one. After Detective Robinson finds out that the mysterious evil force spoiling the holidays has been the fake Santa all along, he starts searching for the real Santa. Soon, he comes across a basement with three doors. Behind each of them, there's a man dressed as Santa and claiming to be the real one. Look at them attentively and try to figure out which Santa is real. It's Santa on the left! Hopefully you paid attention to the photo on the wall. It depicts Santa with his reindeer. If we compare the photo with all Santas, only the one on the left is absolutely the same. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Erica wants to find her true love, so she's visiting a speed dating event. She talks to three strangers. Each guy tells her some brief facts about himself. Victor says, I'm an architect. I've recently built the largest skyscraper in this city, and now I want to settle down and find a beautiful wife. Jason says, I run my own bakery chain. I've never had any serious relationships because I was too busy with my work. And Edgar says, I recently got fired, but it's okay because my parents are billionaires. I'd like to find a soulmate to travel the world. Uh -oh. Who should Erica choose? Take a closer look at Victor. His teeth are too sharp. He doesn't eat or drink anything, and he doesn't have any shadow. It's not safe to date a vampire. As for Jason, he clearly wore a wedding ring. There's a tan line on his ring finger. Therefore, he's a liar. That's why Erica should choose Edgar. After the event, Erica enters her favorite Indian restaurant near her apartment. She makes an order, puts her bag on one of the tables, and goes to the restroom. After a couple of minutes, she returns and finds out that oh, someone no. had stolen her bag. The waiter says, I saw someone with a neck tattoo running into the restaurant's second floor. Erica goes upstairs and finds three possible suspects. Can you spot the thief? This lady is the only one who has a big enough paper bag to hide Erica's bag. And there's also a wig inside her bag. The next day, Edgar calls Erica and invites her on a date. He offers her to pick the place, 
Erica wants to test Edgar's logical skills. So, she sends him this rebus. Can you help Edgar show up to the right place? This rebus means central square. Finally, Edgar and Erica meet at the central square. Uh -oh. They spot that one of the people in the crowd is a time traveler. Can you guess who? It's this guy. Who's jogging in wooden shoes in the 21st century? Edgar invites Erica to an exclusive party. But unfortunately, the guard refuses to let them in without a password. Edgar says, oh, come on, give us a hint. The guard says, OK, what time of the day reads the same backward and forward? Can you help the guys crack the code? The correct answer is noon. The next day, Erica invites Edgar over for dinner. She has some candies in the kitchen. They look similar but have three different flavors. Three orange, two strawberry, and five grape candies. Suddenly, the lights turn off in the entire building. Now the kitchen is completely dark. How many candies must Erica take out to make sure she has at least one candy of each flavor? To figure out the minimal number of candies, subtract one from the smallest number and then add all the larger numbers to it. And you'll get nine. Erica locked her computer with a password and wrote some hints on a sticker. Edgar wants to see her shopping list to pick the perfect gift for Valentine's Day. So in Erica's absence, he tries to log in. Let's take a look at the hints. Can you help him crack this code? It's not just a list of products, see? The correct password is pilot. Today is Edgar and Erica's wedding day. Man, they move fast. In the morning, the bride is getting ready. First of all, she goes to the shower for 20 minutes. When she returns to her room, oh, no. she finds out that someone had stained her wedding dress. Only the bridesmaids had access to this dress. So Erica questions them. Lily says, in the last 20 minutes, I was chatting with your mom in the living room. She can confirm my words. Rosie says, I'm not proud of it, but I was in the kitchen secretly eating some snacks prepared for the wedding dinner. And Daisy says, I've been dealing with a flower shop. They delivered the wrong flowers. Can you guess who stained the dress? It was Rosie. There's the same mud under her shoes. It's time to start the ceremony, but Edgar is missing. His mad ex-girlfriend Zoe is a witch. She sneaked into the wedding, caught Edgar, and cloned him. Erica finds Zoe and six different Edgars in the basement. Zoe says, I wanted to make some copies of Edgar to keep him with me. Now I have enough. You can take your husband back. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't remember who's the original. Can you help Erica spot the real Edgar? The third one. All the others have paranormal powers. The wedding begins, but there's a thief among the guests. Can you spot this person? It's this innocent-looking lady with two purses. Edgar and Erica are going to India for their honeymoon. Can you see what's wrong with their plane? Open fire is prohibited on board. The stewardess must know that. After landing, 
Edgar and Erica take a taxi and go to their hotel. Suddenly, they see a family of ducks crossing the road. Erica takes a picture, but unfortunately, it's unfocused. Can you count the exact number of ducks? Let's take a look at one duck at a time. We can see two beaks, so there's another duck behind the first one. And here, we have two little ducks near the bigger one. And this duck is single. So far, the overall sum is six. This guy is not a duck, it's a goose. But there's one more duck hiding behind him, and three more over here. So the overall number is 10. Erica and Edgar arrive at their hotel. Four employees greet them in the lobby, but one of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Take a look at the logo of this hotel. It's a lotus with six petals, but the logo on this lady's badge has a five-petal lotus. Therefore, she's a fake employee. The hotel manager gives the guys a key to the best room for the newlyweds. They go to check out the room, but when they see the interior, they immediately oh, no. ask for another one. Why? There's a transparent lizard crawling along the curtains. This potted flower has teeth, and someone is clearly peeping at them through the eyes of this portrait on the wall. Erica, Edgar, and their tour guide go hiking. They have three backpacks, one with sleeping bags and a tent, one with warm clothes and camping gear, and the heaviest one, a backpack with food. Each has to choose one backpack to carry. Erica readily agrees to take the heaviest one. Why? It'll be getting lighter and lighter after each camp. On the way, the guys decide to go explore the local caves. They walk inside and suddenly a landslide blocks the way back. There are four tunnels ahead, each with a sign telling you which dangers lurk inside. There's a family of evil wizards living in the first tunnel. They curse every human who dares to come in. The second tunnel is filled with venomous spiders. The third one is swarmed by bats. And the fourth tunnel is on fire. Which one do you choose to stay safe? They should pick the second tunnel. Spiders don't hurt people for food. Finally, the guys get outside and see a tree with many beautiful parrots. Can you count the exact number of birds in this tree? The task was to count the number of all birds, so there are 10 birds in this tree, including 6 parrots. In the evening, Erica and Edgar are walking in the city. They see a local parade but there's a thief among the performers. Can you see him too? This guy is sneaking her bracelet. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.